dishes. You can look at the different, you might want to start a remote display server, that sort of thing. So Ron sent me all these scripts and I'm like, these things are awesome, but I don't run very many Windows machines on my home network. And so I was thinking, who, how am I going to test these? What sort of company might have a lot of these to run against? <laughs> So I thought, you know, it would be pretty interesting since it's own, their own darn protocol, you would think if anyone can secure it, Microsoft would be able to. <laughs> and I thought it might be interesting to see what sort of policies they take. Do they just ban it at the perimeter? Do they lock the servers down so that they don't allow the guest access and the IPC share and that sort of thing? What is it that they really do? So I designed a scan. Step one was finding the target IP addresses allocated to Microsoft. And I used typical things, you know, look up the air and database to find allocations. And eventually I found more than a million of them and decided to scan them all. <laughs> <laughs> I started with a broad version detection scan. So basically this scan, I didn't want it to be super, super intrusive and detailed at, for the first scan. I kind of wanted to have an idea of what was there and then I could scan further on once I've seen the initial results. That gives me faster results and makes it less likely to raise a lot of eyebrows. So we say nmap, do aggressive timing, scan what we've empirically found to be the 50 most likely ports to be open, do version detection, OS detection, do a minimum host group size of 128, which makes it faster because it scans more in parallel, set a host timeout of 10 minutes so that we don't waste too much time on any single host, send the output to files, and I give it the list of IP addresses. And this sort of scan not many years ago could have taken a month to complete. And then if you wanted it any faster, you would have to use a bunch of really detailed performance options to tune it so that it goes faster but not too fast that you get inaccurate results. Fortunately, Nmap's gotten a lot smarter in the last few years, developed a lot of more clever algorithms, and in this case we were able to scan the million IP addresses in about one day, 26 hours, and we have 74,293 hosts up. So let's take a quick look at the results here. And I'll uh, zoom this. Um, looks like it's about all on the screen, good. And so basically this file is a big one and that's actually the problem with it. I mean, more than a third of a million lines. This file is intimidating on its face and for us to go through all these, it would basically be next DEF CON by the time we got it all done. So I want to show you a little trick I like to use in those sorts of cases. Oops. And so here's a scan or a, a simple Unix command that I'm going to run which basically says take all of the open ports found during the scan and look at the different versions running and give me a reverse sorted list of how often every sort of service is running. So we take a look at the results. We see the highest is IIS 6. And by the way, I did give these results, I did these scans last year and gave these results to MSRC. So I hope, hopefully they fixed it by now. If not, it's going to be some long nights in Redmond coming up. <laughs> we have uh, IIS 6, so at least we can give them eating their own dog food here, uh, running some of their own stuff. But rather than look at the top of the list, what I like to do is go down near to the bottom and look at the more obscure services that they're running because those are the ones you're more likely to be able to find a little bug in. I found little printers uh, that I could get into the administration port on, check their toner levels, make sure everything's okay there. <laughs> Various teleconferencing systems. There's just all sorts of bizarre stuff on here. But we're kind of getting distracted. As much fun as it would be to take a voyeuristic view into Microsoft's network right now, it's really NSE and SMB that we're most interested in. So let's take a look at those results. So 
The vast majority of Microsoft's network blocks, I'm happy to say, they basically filtered uh, all of the MS RPC and SMB ports at their gateways. And so that's something that enterprises and businesses should really take in mind, although you should have already. I mean, if Microsoft feels that it should be blocked at the network and can't be really secured, it's probably a good idea for other businesses to do the same. But note that I said the vast majority of Microsoft's networks blocked these ports. There were actually some that didn't, and I found dozens of hosts that had port 445, the more modern of the ports, available. So from that I designed a new scan. And basically I said nmap, and the key new option we're going to look at is hyphen hyphen script equals to say run nmap scripting engine, and instead of doing the default scripts I showed you, we're going to do SMB enum domains, enum processes, basically all of the scripts that I showed you before that are in the less intrusive categories, like the enumeration scripts, the information gathering scripts. Even I'm not crazy enough to do brute force authentication cracking and crack their passwords and then present it at DEF CON. <laughs> but even from there, um, we ran the scan and got the results. And I would like to get some commitment from the audience here before we look at the results. Who here thinks Microsoft was totally secure? <laughs> huh, we've got one person, but I think there's probably several Microsoft people in the room who still aren't raising their hands. But let's, let's take a look. Maybe Microsoft will surprise us here. So we're going to look at the results, and we don't have time to go through all that many of them, so I'm going to go through one of my favorite machines. <laughs> can you guys, can you read this? Okay. So we have 976 closed ports, so that means they've defaulted the ports to be accessible, so you can tell if they're open or closed rather than filtered. And so instead of default deny and allow what you want, they've default allow and they've filtered a few ports like telnet and off that they specifically wanted to prohibit. So that's the less secure way to do it, so we'll deduct two points for that. Next we look at MMAP's open port list. And as you can see, there are quite a few of them. More than is really easy to secure. And so for having that many ports open, I think another two or three point deduction is warranted. But the part we're really interested in is the host script results. This is where our NSE act action comes in. First we have their shares to enumerate. They have some sort of admin share, a C drive, a D drive. Now these ones are restricted shares, so you need a password, which you could get thanks to maybe our SMB brute script. But one can argue that it's not best practice to share your hard drive over the internet, even with a password. <laughs> And so we're going to give them, give them some points off for that, maybe four or five. Now we're going to continue on and we get to the SMB enum user script, which is one I talked about. And here we get the list of usernames on their domain controller. And we have, some of them are actually pretty interesting. Here's the administrator user. This guy I like. I took off some of the last names to give him a modicum of privacy, but Richard, his username is the boss man, which <laughs> I thought was pretty cool. Let's see what else. There are a few other ones that are worth pointing out here. We've got this MSB50 net. That's the Building 50 networking team. A nice thing about this script is that in the verbose mode hyphen V, it shows you all this extra information rather than just the list of usernames. There's a user not a guest exclamation point. And then, yeah, there's this support user, Microsoft Corporation, Redwood, Washington, but my favorite is the t-shirt ho. <laughs> so that's the sort of information that you can get by doing large scale scans uh, with this, these SMB scripts and with NSE in general. So as you can see, they're a lot of fun. 
I'd like to mention again that uh, these scripts were actually written by a fellow named Ron Bose, and all I really did was take them and point them at Microsoft and pull the trigger. So Ron really deserves most of the credit, and I think if he was able to get in the room, <laughs> Yeah, there he is. <laughs> yes, thank you, Ron. These scripts are awesome. We also have a fellow named Drazen Popovich who's been working on us this summer to improve our SMB stuff even further. So now we've gone on how to use SMB scripts, basically what they do. But the next question is, what about writing NSE scripts? If you think about it, Using them is probably as much as your average casual MMAP user is likely to do. But really, any script kitty could do that. What do you do if you want a networking task which we don't already have a CAN script for? What if we have a script but it doesn't behave in exactly the way that you believe it should? This next section is going to show you how what we provide to let you go to the next step. And even if you don't consider yourself a great programmer, how you can build these scripts to run your own tasks. And we're going to start basically with these scripts. The language that they use is called Lua. It's a great little language. It's easy to learn. If you know other languages like Python or Perl or compiled languages like C, you can probably figure it out. It's tiny to embed because we didn't want to bloat your end map. The Lua book says, the complete distribution, source code, manual, plus binaries for some platforms fits comfortably on a floppy disk. So for those of you young people in the audience, a floppy disk, <laughs> it's a small storage technology. Now, Lua is also widely used, known, and debugged, so we weren't taking something brand new that they might stop developing the next day. It's been in use since 1993. Its best use, known use is in the game industry, with games like World of Warcraft or Crisis. But what we've been seeing more and more is that security tools have been picking it up. We're talking in this talk about how Nmap uses it for NSE. Wireshark can use it now for protocol dissectors. And the Snort 3.0 beta has its own Lua interpreter to extend Snort as well. Basically, the only holdout now on the Lua bandwagon is probably Metasploit, which is in Ruby. But whenever I see H.D. Moore at these conferences, I talk his ear off about why he should rewrite it yet again in Lua this time. I think that's why he's been avoiding me the last couple of days. It's also extensible. We can hook it up to Nmap's fast parallel scripting engine. It's safe and secure. No buffer overflows, format strings. I mean, Wireshark showed us the problem with doing their dissectors in C. They got a lot of contributions, but not all of them were secure. And it seemed like every week you got a new vulnerability in a dissector that someone contributed. It's portable, works on all the systems Nmap does, and it's interpreted so you don't have to keep recompiling. Nmap adds a few capabilities to that. We have protocol and helper libraries. They help you make, say, an SMB query or a HTTP request without getting bogged down in the details of the protocol for making those requests. We have protocol brute forcers, like we looked at SMB brute, so that it can find the passwords for you in those times when you really need them. We have SSL, and we have the dependency system. We talked about how SMB Enum users can then take that user name list and SMB brute knows to have users run fast, take those results, and crack them. So that's a really quick overview of what we've added. Let's look at an actual example script. So I think the script that I'm going to show you this time is called rpcinfo.nse. And it basically does exactly what you would expect. It Nmap users and pen testers in general who've been around a long time, you kind of get used to seeing port 111 rpc bind open. So you just run rpcinfo hyphen e hostname to see what's there and what rpc services are listening and what ports. Well, it would be nice if Nmap could do that for you whenever it detects the port open and it could put the results right there in your Nmap results so you don't have to keep it all separate.